The way we approached Pan Am was to go off and decide what kind of motorcycle we wanted to build. What are the targets? What are the requirements? What are the things that are going to delight real advocates, people that really have this in their blood? We want to deliver all the expectations that those customers expect. We want to do it better than the competition, and we want to do it in our own way that's unique. It has to be the Harley way. So that's where the tension was, because a lot of people thought when we said it's got to be the Harley way, it's going to be heavy, it's going to be loud, it's going to be it's going to have flames on it. And that's not what we were talking about. We were talking about individuality and something that people hadn't done before. You kind of have to find that space in between evolution and revolution. And we had a little more freedom with, with uh, Pan America because there was nothing that came before it. Whenever you do something that's kind of radically different and unexpected, you're going to shake people up. I remember telling leadership at the time, I said, this is exactly what we want. It's the right bike, it's the right shape, it's the right moment, and it's kind of the right mindset right now with the company. It took a story. I said, hey, first of all, when the company started, there were no roads. That's a great, nice foundational chunk to kind of build this whole thing off of. Second thing was the, the way that we supported two world wars with products that basically invented adventure touring. And then, I mean, we won Baja. And if you think about America and just the vast amounts of land that are unpaved, like this countryside around me, there's just a huge opportunity here. And it is touring, you know, and we kind of invented Grand American Touring. And the fact that you're being so polarized about it is a really healthy reaction to have. I, I believe iconic, innovative design scares the hell out of people at first. And if we don't have that, that means we haven't pushed it far enough. Being an industry-leading company doing touring puts us in a really great position to build an adventure touring bike. Because it's an adventure touring bike, because it's a tool, because function absolutely has to deliver, we were lockstep with engineering. The acuity to actually put that engineering into the bike to make it a superior motorcycling experience was a lot harder than uh, people might have thought. It was ground up, and it started with the powertrain. We're not really into covers and decorative things that you put over and hide. We're really more into the functionality. What you see is actually what works. And that's why we believe that the engine should be out front and proud. The concept here was to design the engine such that it was stiff enough to be the central member of the frame. Which gave us the opportunity to make the whole motorcycle lighter. And that as a designer allows you incredible flexibility because you're not stuck to a frame. You can actually design from the engine out. It's shaped so that you can take high speed turns and really get a grip on it. From a dynamic standpoint, the weight needs to be low and it needs to be in the right places. How do we optimize our frame weight to get the stiffnesses we need? There's so many areas that have to come together to make this thing work right. It's really the definition of a massive team effort. Once we started putting people on them, then we had the problem that everybody in the company wanted to get on them. At our Arizona test facility, we built a whole new section just for testing off-road adventure touring bikes. We developed nine different criteria that we look at for off-road development, dirt roads, how the bike behaves, how it slides, how it doesn't, where the grip is, where it isn't. So all the road bike knowledge that we had just came on top of that. We spent a lot, a lot of time and effort to make sure that the bike really did everything. impressed with giving the engineers the freedom and creativity to come to this space and they've really expressed themselves. They've found it almost like an intellectual challenge and they've done an exceptional job of really reinterpreting adventure touring for Harley-Davidson. 
this powertrain is a home run for us. This bike guy has a top speed of 135 miles an hour with cargo. Crazy competent on the road. Carves switchbacks like a full-fledged street bike. You know, so hot off the line that people are gonna have to use a uh, glue to hold onto the handlebars. This is a new genre for Harley Davidson. We plan to build upon this platform going forward. A product that's coming out very soon, the 1250 Custom Cruiser. It's got a fistful of torque and power, just like the Pan America. The suspension system has got top of the line balance free forks with semi active top of the line damping, a balance free rear cushion with also semi active damping control, as well as the adaptive ride height. So, adaptive ride height is a first for the motorcycle industry. It lowers the motorcycle as you come to a stop, which makes it much, much more confidence inspiring for anyone. And then, once you take off, the system automatically builds up pressure and, and pumps itself back up to your normal height. I spent a day on a regular Pan America with regular suspension. I had then hopped on an adaptive ride height bike that I had to do some other work on. And that was the moment I was like, oh, wow, yeah, <laughs> this is a game changer. People are going to love this. With a push of a button, I can make it a very sporty bike. If I want to make it a Luxo Cruiser, I can do that too. I feel what sets us apart is the way that Harley does customization. We've thought of everything. Titanium exhaust, lightweight materials that are durable. We partnered with Michelin on our Navi tires, the auxiliary lights, um, for that nighttime riding or for the canyon riding. We offer guards for those rugged terrains. We offer three different luggage solutions. Our sport luggage, docking mounts right on the vehicle. The aluminum luggage for those off-road riders that are camping. It's all about maximizing space. Soft luggage bags for those ultra rugged adventures. What we do is try to balance out from a look standpoint as well as the functionality of it. PNA is a must have for Harley Davidson as a whole because that's part of our DNA is customization and being able to, you know, provide things for our customers to be able to improve the bike and their experience. The finishes are matte sheen, they got texture, we went with powder coat because it's durable. We really wanted to design and develop something really tactical and functional for this consumer and rider. I think from a styling and color material finish, graphic standpoint, we always look to the past. You know, Harley has such a, a strong brand identity that we have to look back and, you know, make sure we're nodding to it or also just inspire from it. I mean, Harley Davidson is known for these great leather jackets and our great leather technology, but the adventure touring rider is different. In order to hit the ground running with really compelling product that met these customer needs, we had to partner with someone that had the right experience. So working with Revit, they are at the top of the list. They are experts in this field. They make fantastic riding gear. Gloves, helmets, boots. We offer from head to toe to fingertips everything that they're going to need. This is going to be all the gambit of weather. This is going to be a whole gambit of terrain. So we put that focus on a textile garment in that it brings us a real versatility in waterproofing, in venting. We've gone through a lot of work to, to really show up with the right stuff to you know, meet these customers at their expectations and then exceed them. It's this great combination of product design and transportation design and Harley-Davidson design. You know, the, the first cafeteria napkin sketches that led to this thing. Long, long journey, thinking about the history of the company and kind of creating the missing link, if you will. And now here we are in 2021 with everything that's going on in the world and all the change. And, you know, Harley Davidson is back off road. To be a small part of that story is, you know, that, that's, that's pretty exciting. The paved road is one thing. It has its poetry and its moments and its romance, but it doesn't get you here, you know? Thanks for showing me around your neighborhood. Anytime. Spikes were phenomenal. They really were. So how was Kenya? How was riding a Pan America in Kenya? 
It was great. I mean, you know, I rode it nonstop for a few hours into a rainstorm, into the heat. Yeah. Gravel, off-road sand, all the riding modes, and it was you yeah. know, really fantastic. Even right. at night, you know, in that landscape, you have elephants and giraffe and everything showing up <laughs> at the same time. Incredible. No, it was quite quite amazing. After a couple of days, get to know the bike, and it's just, yeah. you know, for the power it has, it's incredibly agile. Yep. yep. It's a proper Harley machine that you ride through thick and thin. I thought, you know, the last couple of days, just the more I rode it, the smaller and smaller the bike became. It does. It just feels lighter yeah. and more agile, and you just gain confidence because it's really, it's very forgiving. Ride modes just compensate, make you feel like you're a, a much better rider than and you It's are. a very sleek bike, I mean, it really is. Yeah. yeah. And it's the first adventure touring bike made in America. It is. Yeah. This bike does everything. This is the start. We have great plans to expand on Pan Am and mm -hmm. lots of innovation waiting. This is just a launch into a whole new dimension for the company. Yeah. Well, cheers to a great day. Thank you so much for showing me those incredible trails. It was fun. Trails. We rode quite a distance. Yeah. I mean, this, we, we had you know proper touring, but then yeah. just off the beaten track. And yeah. it's just a yeah. natural expansion from Grand American touring into off-road touring. To me, it's part of the history, it's part of the legacy, it's part of the DNA of Harley Davidson. And you've got to innovate, but you preserve the past as well. And yeah. that's what Harley Davidson has always done so well. It's true. That's what we're doing with this incredible yeah. bike, you know. I think it's ready, what do you think? I think it's ready, absolutely. So let's, let's do it this, to the huh? world. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Let's do it. So Jochen, you brought your guitar? <laughs> <laughs>